Yes, there's something there's something I need to pick in this exact room. So not this room, sorry, this um this kitchen. Okay, there we go, knife. Let's cut the cheese. Haha, <laughs> fart joke. Cut the cheese, do it. Now we've got oil. Sweet. I think that's it for that room. Um Indeed. Let's use that on this. You remember Pagri Tits. That was supposed to be like party tits. Somebody was trying to type party tits and they typed Pagri. I don't know what a Pagri is. To play Xenoblade Chronicles or not to? I don't know. Chunk of pork. Okay. Uh, dry ice. I gotta be careful. There's somewhere around here. I think it's. I think it's this. Yes, it is that. Okay, there we go. Pado John. That was his name. Thank you, Vis. I was trying to remember what we named Vincent. It was Pado John. Oh my gosh. Should I pick the same thing? Sid was farts? Did we seriously just name him farts? Like, that's it? <laughs> Clone. It's okay. Impressed. It what? is? Are you sure? I, I double checked with my walkthrough. I think I'm okay. I hope I'm okay anyway. Um, so we got the pork already. Okay. Um, turn around. Look down here. There's some stuff in here. That's nothing. We need this though. So now we need to be MacGyver. Put some of this stuff together. Okay. Or mm, not that. Um, we need to first. Oh, let's do this. Can we crush this? <laughs> How do you do anything anymore? Am I missing something? Oh, I'm missing the chicken. Okay. Combine with the dry ice. Dry ice crumbled. Combine with the water bottle. Ja -ja, and then combine this with the rope. Yay! I did it! Okay, and then put this on the doorknob. With the power of farts, you got it. Well, the freezer one, so far the important thing to say was, it is rather odd. And that was it. Oh. Hopefully I'm right. Like, you know different methods, and I know different methods of how to get pretty much the same result. Satan. Satan Kikado. Oh. Oh, I opened it. 
<laughs> I was like, wait, why didn't it open? Oh god. You should see, remember that huge bubble tea I was talking about? I've barely even scratched the surface. I have so much of it left. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, this is my drink for the whole night, I swear. Definitely doing a medium size next time. This large is like an extra large. I don't understand how this happened. Um... Oh, looks like we're going to the same room as last time. Um, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Gonna have to go make chai lattes. Whoa! Are you going to my workplace? <laughs> the playthrough of Mass Effect? No! See, uh, Chiaki Shepherd still exists. I just haven't played it because whenever I played it, I felt like I was the only one excited about it. So I stopped playing Mass Effect because I felt like I was the only one enthused. I'm always enthused when I play Mass Effect and Dragon Age. I could play them a billion times and I'm like, yeah! So whenever I streamed it, I felt like no one else cared. <laughs> and it was just me going, "Wee!" So then I was like, maybe I should just stop playing. I don't know. <laughs> That's how I felt. Um, I mean, I had already streamed it too, but that was just an extra thing I was playing. But now that I've kind of gotten back into the flow of a set number of games that I'm trying to play and finish, um, I decided maybe they could do without Mass Effect because, again, you guys didn't seem as enthused about it. So I was just like, hey, I'll just leave Mass Effect to... I'm probably going to start a new game of Mass Effect outside of... Because I'm playing Dragon Age again, and I'm on Dragon Age 2 already. So once I beat Inquisition... And the DLC. I haven't played the DLC yet. Yikes! The Jaws of Hakon. I bought it the day it came out, and I haven't played it, because I'm like, I need to replay the entire game. Good excuse, too. Oh, would you? Oh, thank you. I just remember whenever I streamed it, it was less... The chat was less active. That's why I assumed no one really was enthused as much as I was to play Mass Effect again, but I understood too because it was like recently, it was within maybe a year or a couple of months I had last played it for you guys, so um, I could understand why there would be no, no excitement. I'm gonna see, since I'm streaming this, I'm gonna see if I'm also able to stream uh, those Tales of games that I talked about. Some of the originals, some of the ones that only came out in Japan, there's some fan translated stuff, there's some... I'm gonna, I'm gonna say now though, if I have access to the Japanese copies, I'm probably gonna play those. Obviously with English, um... For example, I think Tales of Fantasia, I think I downloaded the, uh, I think I got the, uh... The Japanese, uh, voices with the English sub. Because the skits are voiced and the characters are voiced, and I like that a lot better. Um, same thing with Tales of the Abyss, I actually own on the PS2, but I went and got the Undub, which is the, um, obviously, again, the Japanese voices with the English subs, or the English text, because they voice everything, and it's really nice to hear, and <clears throat> it's different, it'll be different for sure. But then there's others, like I have Tales of Exilia and Exilia 2 in Japanese, but I'm probably going to play those in English. Tales of Grace is in English as well. But I think I'm going to do... Sorry, what am I looking for here? Oh, that's not... See, I'm not looking at the thing I want to look at. Uh, yeah, we're going in door 7. 
Uh, remind me, we're gonna try door three sometime. Um, we're gonna try it sometime before I, I finish up, maybe. Uh, what is this? Yeah, okay. On the, maybe on the next ending, I'll show you guys what's in door three. And then we'll reload and do that. But for now, we're gonna pick door seven. Which one? Which English one wasn't all the way dubbed? Yeah, uh, there's stuff like that. Oh, uh, you mean like... See, when Tales games used to come out here before, it was kind of they would, um... They would, uh, not do certain things that the Japanese ones had, like full voice skits. And now I find, since they released, like, Exilia and Symphonia, they've either... They've been voicing them, or they've been including dual audio and stuff, which is awesome. I like both options. I like everything voiced, but I also like the option of dual audio. Because I like to hear bo both voice actors for each region. Uh, I was going to say for Graces, I'm going to do the English opening, and I'm also going to try and get the Japanese opening as well. Because that song is awesome. Uh, and Boa is awesome. Back in the operating room, so this shouldn't be too... I mean, I was just here, so hopefully I don't take too long to do this puzzle. Uh, let's back out of that. Oh, I guess we can pick this up while we're here. No, I, I meant the torso. Sweet. Um, over here, let's grab a scalpel. Clover, no. Try to grab... Okay. Forceps on this. Grab that. Combine this with the scalpel. We get a key. Sweet. Is there anything else I need to grab? I don't think so. Let's go this way. Let's grab these. Um, you missed door three. We'll go through it. Have I ever played any of the older ones? Um, I haven't played... Baldur's Gate, I'm assuming is what it's called. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, I have on Steam. I'm just really terrible, and I mean really terrible sometimes, sometimes, at playing keyboard-based games. I prefer to use a controller. But um, I've been meaning to, once I wrap up some of the games that I'm playing outside of uh, stream, I've been meaning to play Knights of the Old Republic. I really should, because I want to play it so bad. It's either that, or I can borrow my cousin's Xbox. Because my Xbox 360, as I've said before, it's a Japanese one, so it's not, it's region locked, and it does not play Knights of the Old Republic, which sucks, because I went out and bought a copy on Amazon of Knights of the Old Republic to play it, and then found out that my console can't play it, so, yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing again. Sweet. What is this? The Japanese open for Graces? <gasps> Are you kidding? You really haven't? Uh. Oh, May seems like you've got a bad case of, like, bad trolls. The ones that keep remaking accounts and stuff. I've had that happen once or twice with people here, but... Luckily, not not too bad. It sucks, I know. You're making me want to play the, the song now, Val. Ah, hmm. I have to ask something specific here, and I think it's the one that we picked already. Uh, ask Seven if he knows about Ice Nine. Hmm. Da da da! Wow, his eyes, did you see that? He had lazy eyes just now. It's the only thing you really can do, May. It's just a bad case of bad troll. It's not just a one-time troll, it's multiple times. I should, because you know what? I love Star Wars, I really should. Ah. <laughs> and you know, uh, what's his name? Raphael Sabarge and aren't Jennifer is Jennifer Hale in that too? I know Raphael Sabarge plays like one of the only romantic interests in that. AKA Caden. Caden's not my kind of guy, but you know. 
Well, not that I know of, because I'm always romancing Garrus, but you know. Hee hee hee. Whoops. That's actually, I'm doing a playthrough right now of Dragon Age 2, and for once in my life, I'm actually attempting to romance Anders. It's gonna be really weird, because I'm not used to romancing other people. Usually, you know, when I play through Dragon Age, it's always, always, always Alistair and Cullen. Um, so, and the only other person in Mass Effect that I broke romance for one time was Thane, knowing how it would end, but yeah. I romanced Thane the one time, and now it's just been Garrus again and again and again, as always. Um, right, so I need to go in here. Sorry, I got distracted. I need this. But yeah, I really do want to play Knights of the Old Republic. Especially because it's so, like, people love it. And I'm like, I'm sure I love it. Gotta turn this on. Let's put liquid in there. Some of this liquid in there. Some of the blue liquid again. Ja -ja. Perfect. But yeah, so I'm gonna try and romance Anders. I know how that's gonna end too, but I'm still gonna try and romance him. I mean, he was adorable in Awakening, and then stuff happened, you know. Stuff. What am I doing? Oh, I need to back out. Back out. Oops. Hey, Remix! Welcome! You found a deck of tarot cards. Sweet. I want to get a, a pack of Hanafuda cards. Uh, I feel bad that I never got to get those uh, Mario ones. I was hoping they'd release other kinds when the Nintendo thing was out. I forget what it's called. Club Nintendo was out. So now I have all those points that never went anywhere. Whoops. I meant to pick my final prize stuff before they closed and I just got lazy and didn't do it. True story. <laughs> Jupiter Kagi Jupiter Kagi Oh, oh. We gotta do this first. Give her the four leaf clover. Cause you're a clover. Yeah, really. Anders is cool, and then he does this. <laughs> and that's not cool, man. I'm looking at him like, dude, that's so not cool, Anders. Why you do it? This is a sock. You are a sock. Ooh, she is! Jennifer Hale. I love Jennifer Hale. Look what you did, Val. <laughs> it's stuck in my head. No, Remix, and I cry on the inside every day until they actually give us one. Those guys keep at GameStop keep promising me that as soon as they figure out they're gonna tell me. I'm like, send me a text message, write to me on Facebook, just tell me the second you know. Please, and I will fly in there and I will pre-order the shit out of that, but nothing yet, and it's got me really worried. I want those Chibi Kinchara figures. I want those I want the entire package. I just want it. I want it so bad. I wanna cry. What did you do? You talked about the Japanese version of um uh, Mamoritai. Oh, that's its Japanese name. Mamoritai, White Wishes. Uh, Tales of Grace is opening in Japanese. It's stuck in my head because I sang it earlier. Um, I might do that too. I know I still promised. I, I'm sorry. I promised you guys that I would record uh, Persona 4's ending. I know I haven't gotten to that yet. I just have to choose a day where my voice sounds okay because there's some days I listen to my voice and I'm like, blah. So, I'm sure it sounds okay, but it makes me go blah. So, I'm waiting for a date. Today was one of those days where my voice was on point and I didn't get to record anything. I just sang to myself. 
But I might do the I might do the Tales of openings as well if you guys want. Or if I want. Because <laughs> I kind of want to sing them. Um, I might do that. Especially if they give me a bit of trouble with copyright stuff. I might just put me singing over it like I did for, um, for Golden. For Shadow World. Uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. What am I trying to do? Oh, I'm just trying to... God, I keep looking at the wrong thing. Because I have two different tabs open. I don't need to do anything here. I just need to... Sorry for getting so distracted. You talked about it. <laughs> it is sad, May. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. Nice Japanese accent. Oh! Oh! Arigato gozaimasu. Honto arigato ne. Uh, being locked up alone with the boy. Yep. Here comes the wet conversation again. Your ban list? Oh my god. I can't imagine how many names are on that list. Mine too, sometimes I look at it and I'm like, it's not huge, but it's still like quite a bit of people and I'm like, wow. 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 And then when I'm doing Tales of Hearts R, I'm gonna look up the Japanese opening too, because I want to see what it's supposed to be. Not the instrumental thing. I can't believe they went back on their ways for Tales of Hearts R, but I guess they had licensing issues maybe with the opening theme in Japanese. Because they went back to their old ways of, like, Symphonia and Abyss, where they took out the lyrics. And I'm like, no. I actually like Tales of openings. They're really catchy. Wet conversation. Oh, it's Quinny! Quinny! Hi, Quinny. So much skipping. Yet it's still taking a while. Well, that's mostly my fault. Um... Okay! Um... Come on, we can do this. Am I gonna stream Hearts R? Yeah! I definitely am. I was just wondering if I should restart it and put it on YouTube, but like if I should, because I'm not too far ahead right now, or if I should just continue with you guys and re-record it for YouTube. I don't know. By the way, to those of you that are following Vesperia, I have the next set recorded. I just need to sub it. I recorded, um, the night that I uploaded the last part, I recorded some more. You came across my favorite part in the last part was, uh, when Yuri scares Carol. Rah! Carol's like, ah! <laughs> my favorite. Even Estelle, because Estelle's back is turned to them. Even when he goes, Rah! Estelle kind of makes a move there. So we're going in door one again. To get this next ending. It's not too bad, actually. We're, um, this is kind of going a lot faster. Which is the chart room again, as you guys know. What happened? My success is going to be a strong victory. <gasps> really? I wonder in what part of my life that is, though that sounds interesting. And to those of you that don't know, I do stream a lot, uh, like, less now because I've got, as you know, aside from work, I've started back up with my Japanese classes. Uh, which happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so, you know, I'm, and I'm heavily into my studies now, so. Because I'm aiming to go study in Japan, and then maybe eventually live in Japan, which would be exciting, because then, you know, to be able to translate stuff for you guys would be great. To actually play Japanese games when they release in Japan and then translate them for you guys while I play would be amazing. And it's Chie's Arcana! I love Chie. Uh, you know that. I don't even have to say it. You just know. Um, 
Let's go in here. I think the pocket watch is in here, yeah? Okay. Here's where... Oh. It was a lie. All Junpei wanted was to get rid of Ace. He'd seen Ace to the wheelhouse at the be Sorry, he'd sent... What is this? This is new. Um, he'd sent Ace to the wheelhouse at the beginning for a reason. There was something he meant to ask Clover, and he meant to ask her in private. There was something he wanted to ask Clover, and he didn't want anyone else to hear him ask it. He also knew that Clover would likely remain silent if there was anyone else around when he asked. That was why he was so desperate to send Ace back to the wheelhouse. Oh, I see. Mm, see, uh, if you want, if you have a Facebook account, or if you want, you can bookmark my Facebook page if you if you don't have a Facebook. I tend to announce there when I'm going to be streaming. I do usually stream on Fridays, but I made a status yesterday saying that I was going to move yesterday's stream to today because Hajime could Skype with me yesterday. We ended up watching Digimon. We're re-watching Digimon. Um, and since he works too, we kind of have to figure out ways that we can communicate. So Friday was the day to go for him. So I said, okay, I'll stream on Saturday since I have Saturdays off. So that's why. Those are my physical therapy days. Well, that's... I have school that... I have school those nights, so I won't be able to stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Quinny. So no need to cry. <laughs> Sorry, Ace opened his mouth and took another look at Junpei and shut it again. A small smirk appeared on his face. Oh, I see. Of course. Oh, sorry, mate. You typed something. I gotta read it in a sec. He looked Junpei over, then glanced at Clover. I apologize for the intrusion. Well, best of luck. Ah, so this is why it's different. Because then he's gonna ask Clover something different now. Phew. Junpei let out a sigh and brushed a few drops of sweat from his forehead. He turned and found himself looking straight into Clover's eyes. She'd heard what Ace had said. She regarded Junpei with caution. What was that about? She was clearly suspicious, and with good reason. Jinpei's eyes widened, and he held up his hands in a gesture of innocence. Oh, no, 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 it's nothing like that. What's it like, then? I just wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't get a chance to ask you about it until now. It's your party, and you'll cry if you want to. Okay, Quinny. Hugs for you, then. Uh, that's so dumb. Why would somebody say that to you, May? I hope you don't don't take that stuff in. That's really stupid. That's really dumb. I don't think anyone should say that kind of stuff to people. They don't know the situation. They're probably not any better off, and they're just saying that because they're hiding behind a computer with anonymity. So, you know. So, sorry. Uh, Junpei wanted to hear the story. What story? About the experiment. Remember? The one you started to tell me in the operating room? You said something about an experiment that happened here nine years ago. Clover bit her lip. She stared down at the floor for several long moments, and when she spoke, it was barely audible. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm just not in the mood, okay? You understand, right? I'm just... I keep thinking about my brother. I... I can't stop. I mean, who would do something like that to my brother? I can't forgive them. I'm not going to let them get away with it. They're going to pay for it. I promise. So, so... Her shoulders were shaking. Drops of blood had sprung up on her lips where she was biting them. She wiped it off and looked up at Junpei, her eyes fierce and angry. Junpei? Who do you think did it? Her voice was cold and scarcely above a whisper. Sorry, that wasn't really cold and scarcely above a whisper. Just pretend it was. <laughs> Junpei gulped. Well, if what Seven said was right, then there would have to have be a, blah, 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 then there would have to be at least two of them. You need at least three people to open the numbered doors, and if you subtract Snake, that means there were at least two other people. You're right. So what does that mean? Well, if we just looked at the bracelet numbers, we'd be able to figure it out. Who could have opened door three with Snake? 
Well, really, who and who, or who, who and who. You mean it could have been four people? Well, technically it's possible. Um, I don't know. That doesn't seem very likely. Why? Um, I'll tell you later. Why don't we just assume it was only two other people for now? Okay, uh, got it. Let's do that then. Then who do you think it could be? Junpei crossed his arms and thought. Snake's bracelet number was two. Which two bracelet numbers added to two could would give a digital root of three? Which two bracelet numbers added to two would give a digital root of three? I'll just pretend you pulled an ace voice. Okay. <laughs> um. Is it? I think they they covered this already, but let me let me see if. Uh, do I need this? Uh, Ace and... Which two bracelet numbers added to two would give a digital root of three? Well, Ace and Santa would, right? Because two and one equals three. Right? Or... Or, yeah, but I'm trying to remember now. The axe ending feels like so long ago. Um, it was definitely Santa and someone. Santa. Oh, Santa is three. Oh my god. Sorry. It's enough. Snake is two. Thank you. Yeah, son. That makes sense. I'm such a derp. Uh, <laughs> thank you for clearing that. Maybe I do need the calculator. Uh, it, um... Yeah, if you want to just tell me, that'd be great. Um, I forget who was involved. Uh, uh, why did I forget already when we just went through this? Because there's too many things happening, that's why. I just answered my own question. Gulped is a strange word. It is. Ah, so I was right. Okay. I remembered after I said... Santa, I'm like, but I feel like seven was in there somewhere. Yeah, I remember that much. Um, would it be Santa and seven? Three! <laughs> Junpei, calm down. <laughs> Could it be? Were Santa and seven the killers? What's wrong? Clover looked at Junpei and he looked back at her. There was no point in hiding it. He told her his conclusions. That's what I thought. She looked less surprised than he'd expected. Santa and Seven. If it was two people, then that's the only combination that works. Hey, wait a minute there. Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said is that those two would have been able to open door three with your brother. There might be other possibilities. Well, what other possibilities? Uh... Um, he didn't have an answer. He was ready to admit defeat when Clover spoke. Are you saying you think that it was three or four people? I really don't think that's likely. Why? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Clover put her hand out expectantly. Junpei pulled out his pen and pad of paper and handed them to her. She opened the notebook and wrote down several simple addition problems. No, not math. Eventually, she had eight, which provided a digital root of three. Whoa. A, two plus one, uh, two plus one plus three plus six equals twelve. B, two plus one plus four plus five equals twelve. C, two plus four plus seven plus eight equals twenty-one. Uh, two plus five plus six plus eight equals twenty-one. Two plus one plus three plus seven plus eight equals twenty-one. Two plus one plus four plus six plus eight equals twenty-one. Two plus one plus five plus six plus seven equals twenty-one. Two plus three plus four plus five plus so is twenty-one. What's this? These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible ones. I see. Junpei? Yeah? I can trust you, right? Of course. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. 
So then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Just cross them out. And you should take off yours, too. The ones with four. So what does that leave? A and E. Wait. It can't be A. Why not? Because June's in that one. There's no way in hell she'd do something like that. <laughs> I would die right away. Yeah, same here. If I was in their situation and I had to do math, I'd be hopeless. Are you sure? I'd bet my life on it. Okay, then. Then I can cross off A2, right? Yeah. Well... What have we got left? E. Do you know what this means? Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Do you think that's likely? Hmm. If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they'd try that hard to hide what they were doing if they were outnumbered. Sorry, if they outnumbered us, right? I just read that totally wrong. Sorry about that. Well, you do have a point. And besides, if Ace and Seven are working together, they could have easily gotten rid of me when I went to the shower room with them. But they didn't. They didn't even try anything. If they were the killers, why wouldn't they? Her voice was calm, but Junpei had only to look at her eye to know it was a forced calm. There were tears forming at the corners of her eyes, and she was blinking furiously to keep them back. Perhaps by attempting an objective analysis of who might have killed her brother, she had been able to distance herself from the harsh reality of his death. The more she struggled to act unconcerned, the more Junpei felt his heart tighten. Okay. Yeah, well that does make sense. It seems pretty unlikely that it was as many as three or four people. Yeah. Then that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. That's how it looks. But why would they do it? There was a moment of silence. I... I think I know. What is it? He laid his hand gently on her shoulder. He was close, so close to the answer. When Ace chose the worst possible moment to return... Oh, it's the narrative. He raised a knowing eyebrow and then spoke. Oh no, he caught you with your hand on her shoulder. He's gonna think something's up. Aw, oh, Quinny, I'm sorry. That sucks. Not only does it make a mess, but now you also don't have a drink. Have I... interrupted something? What do you want? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Uh, could you come with me for a moment? He turned on his heel and walked back toward the wheelhouse. Junpei looked over at Clover. He gave her a short nod, hope, hoped that she would be willing to talk to him again later, and followed Ace. You mean drink kicking? Not kick drinking? What do you want to talk about? Ace looked at Junpei and smiled. Perhaps more of a smirk than a smile. There was something I wanted to... check. Yeah? What's that? If you'll excuse me. With no warning, Ace slipped his hand into the pocket of Jinpei's vest, so we did cover this already, but... Hey! What the hell are you doing? He reached for Ace's arm. But it was already too late. In the older man's hand were the pieces of paper Jinpei had balled up and hidden in his pocket. Just as I thought. You switched them, didn't you? When we voted. Oh, well, can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. When... why did you... Oh, simply curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. Ace smiled, gave Junpei a friendly pat on the shoulder, and then turned on his heel and left. It was a small defeat, but it was a defeat. Junpei had lost the upper hand, and he knew it. He could feel his stomach begin to tense. We read this already. Oh, are we back to puzzle stuff? puzzle -ol. puzzle -ols. puzzle -ols -ols. How do I go back to where I came from? Ah! Oh, this way, I guess. Oh, wait. I was supposed to... Oh, my gosh. I'm supposed to be in here anyways. Oops. Other way. This thing. Oh, 
blah blah blah. Gotta back up. Gotta touch this thing. Oh gosh, I hate this thing so much. It makes me nervous. South. West. Southwest. Northwest. East. Oh no wait, turn around. I'm gonna save really quick again. Again. stuff. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen. The captain's clothes he's got on. And of course, the bracelet with a Zero on it. It's too obvious. Look, look, this is Zero right here. This dead body is Zero. Doesn't that seem kind of funny to you? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, that's not the point. I'm not trying to make fun of them for trying a trick like this, for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work, which makes me wonder, why did they do it? I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking about with a zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it. Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy's supposed to look like everything Zero's supposed to be. Just like we did. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't Zero. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. Look here! Look, here I am! What's wrong, guys? Come on, catch me if you can! That's really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever the person is. That's what seems funny to me. Junpei bent down next to the corpse. We should be almost at the new ending. Uh, you know, there's quite a bit of talking left to do, but we are in the last room that we need to be in, I'm pretty sure. So, no worries. We should be close to an ending soon. 
As soon as we get out of this room, we should be right on our way. Alright, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is? Why would I? Hmm. Junpei sat back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. What? We've got to flip him over. How else are we going to search his pockets? Clover didn't move. Junpei had no choice but to move the body on his own. He grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. It took a moment, but eventually Junpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. But just as it did, something fell from the man's left wrist. The bracelet with zero on the face. Oh, we're not going to read this again. I'm not, no. We know, we know how the bracelets come off. I'm not reading it for like the sixth time. take a picture of this bubble tea so you guys can see how big it is. Junpei stared at the bracelet. This man. He's dead, isn't he? Huh? No, it's just... I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah. yeah I guess you're right. It's pretty obvious. He looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though, you know? I mean, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside you, I mean, that's just... Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. Junpei! I think the explosion might have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. Inconsiderate, Junpei. Suddenly, Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. He turned to look at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. Oh, man, I, I'm... I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean... No! That's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? Uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but... I mean, didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. Clover took a quick, deep breath. Are you sure it was his left arm? Junpei thought back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! She shoved her face closer to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, he did. It was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. No sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Suddenly, she was crying. Junpei wasn't sure what to do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he had expected to hear. Junpei had no idea what, what had just happened. He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. So he simply stood there, confused. Thank you, Junpei. She thanked him again, and then something even stranger happened. Aww. Clover threw herself into Junpei's surprised arms. Hey, what's going on with you? I'm sorry. It's just... I'm so happy. Why? The body in the shower room. It... It isn't his. It isn't my brother. Huh? It's not Snake. Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Junpei decided it would be prudent not to press her for any more information. If she did not wish to tell him, she certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain, then she was likely right. That meant that the body in the shower room wasn't Snake. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted... Lift... Lifted... What? But that knowledge lifted some of the weight... Yep, okay, I got it, from Junpei's heart. He's still alive. I'm... 
I'm so happy! Tears shone in her eyes. Those tears melted Junpei's heart. As she cried, she had pushed herself up against his chest like a child. Junpei put his arms around her and held her tight. Junpei, you were right. Huh? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to, you have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Clover reached into her pocket and pulled something out. It was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. I... I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody, and I was angry and miserable. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Junpei hadn't thought his words would have had such an effect on her. Her words were making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. He scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. If you really want to thank somebody, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf? I got that from him, too. Uh-oh. You ruined it, Junpei. Huh? Then suddenly... Clover broke away from Junpei. Huh? He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd reacted that poorly. Clover began to pace across the room. Six steps to the left, six steps to the right, another six to the left, and then she stopped. Did... did Santa really tell you those things? Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Y yeah, he did. Did I, uh, say something wrong? Oh, no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. Oh, that reminded me of Chiaki. <laughs> Not to be confused with me, Chiaki. You think? Santa knew about the words in the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother and me. But he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group. So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 time out. Junpei held up his hands. He took a deep breath and let it out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. You gotta start and at one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out. Clover nodded. All right, let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? He did, and the realization sent chills down Junpei's spine. All right, how about this? Theory of the telepathic mechanism. Junpei recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So, they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that they're, that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The Nonary game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. Junpei grabbed the sides of his head. Look, I'm sorry, but I don't get it. What did the Nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Clover bit her lip. She blinked back sudden tears. What had happened to her in Nevada? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops into your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So, you're saying the nonary game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? Yeah, but... It couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. And... And... Someone did... Actually die. A girl. Junpei felt the sudden grip of despair on his heart. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed, and for a moment he felt very, very empty and alone. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada, so I never met her, but... I did hear her name. Her name was... Um... 
The sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. God damn it! Ace, is that you again? Junpei spun around. Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Ace, you two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. Ace glanced down at the floor, at the corpse covered in blood. At any rate, uh, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble, and I could really use your assistance. Come on, it'll only take a moment. With that, he turned and walked back toward the communications office. Clover waited until he was out of sight, then spoke in a small, quiet voice. Hey, Omni! I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Excuse me. Clover ignored him. From outside, Junpei could hear Ace calling. Junpei, what are you doing in there? Hurry up! Ugh! Same, Junpei, same. Grumbling to himself, Junpei stomped off toward the communication office. Uh, which is this here? Aren't I in the communications office right now? It's 7 Eleven. Uh, let's get this. Okay. Is there anything in here? Yes, the ink. Uh. Here we go. Combine. Combine. Sweet. Over here. Paper combined with this. Sweet. Oh, wait. No, I need this. Oh, okay, Biss. Ace sure is living up to his name with these objection style interruptions. <laughs> That's amazing, and totally accurate. I need to make sure you don't get too far into the plot. Ace. <laughs> okay, so now we get this folder with all ice again. Alice. Did that mean... Junpei couldn't hold back. He had to know what was in that file. Oh, too bad, Egyptian writing. <laughs> you can't read it. Saka! And then we get the Uranus keycard. This must be a key to the library on the bottom deck. So it would seem. The bottom deck, the library. Junpei remembered something he'd heard from Seven when they'd been in the chemical closet. Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the forest of knowledge, beneath the navel of the gigantic. Did beneath the navel mean the bottom deck? Did forest of knowledge mean the library? If it did, then was Alice in a room somewhere beyond the library? What's wrong? Junpei blinked. Only then did he notice Al Alice. <laughs> Only then did he notice Ace looking at him, curiosity and concern written across his face in equal parts. There was no reason for Junpei to hide his thoughts. Where am I? He began to explain his theory to Ace. Then he stopped. It wouldn't make any sense if Ace didn't know who Alice was supposed to be. So he told Ace everything June had told him. About the Egyptian priestess. About Ice Nine. And finally, about the woman who wouldn't melt who had been recovered from the Titanic disaster. He told him about how she had been called All Ice, which had eventually turned into Alice. And how she had been purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. Honk! <laughs> Five this! Uh, he told him about how she'd been called All Ice, yeah, Alice, blah blah blah. Oh, I read that. And you think that he hid her in a small room behind the library on the bottom deck? Sorry, I think I missed his first sentence. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess so. I see. Ace started, uh, stared off into the distance, his hand slowly and absent-mindedly stroking his beard. To those of you wondering why I'm not eating dinner yet, um, I'm home alone now, so um, my parents had to go to a, a funeral viewing thing. Um, so I'm going to try and finish this ending and then go eat and then come back. Ace stared off into the distance, his hand slowly and absent-mindedly stroking his beard. After a few moments, his hand stopped. He, 
turned slowly to look at Junpei, and his brows drew together. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term CAS? CAS, or CAS, I guess. It stands for Cells Alive System. It's an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Actually, CAS means create a sim, so, you know. But simple, put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the, the formation of ice crystals. Normally, if you freeze something fresh,